Hi everyone, tonight's video is on making ATP without oxygen. So let's look at how cells make ATP in the presence of oxygen as a quick review. So the energy in glucose is in the electrons. Those electrons are picked up by NAD and FAD and brought to the electron transport chain. They drop off their electrons in the electron transport chain and then the energy of those electrons moving down the electron transport chain is moved to pump hydrogen into the intermembrane space, forming that hydrogen gradient. That hydrogen gradient is then used to make the ATP synthase spin when the hydrogen moves from the high concentration intermembrane space to the low concentration matrix. The energy of the ATPase spinning allows ADP to add a phosphate and form ATP. At the end of this electron transport chain, oxygen is required to remove the electron from the electron transport chain in order for the next electron to keep coming down the chain. When oxygen picks up that electron, water is formed. But what if there is no oxygen? So there's nothing to pick up the electron at the end of this electron transport chain. That's going to mean that this electron holder is not going to be able to accept another electron from the previous electron holder. In fact, the entire electron transport chain will get full of electrons. It will be clogged. There will be no more electrons able to be dropped off at the electron transport chain because they're already full. If NADH and FADH2 have nowhere to drop off their electrons, then NAD plus and FAD are not generated. NADH and FADH would just sit here holding onto their electrons, having nowhere to drop them off. What's this going to do to the electron transport chain? Well, with no electrons being added and moving along the electron transport chain, no hydrogens are going to be pumped. So we're not going to end up with any hydrogen gradient. There will be an equal number of hydrogens on each side of the membrane. That means that hydrogens are not going to flow through the ATP synthase and they're not going to make it spin. So no ATP is going to be made by the electron transport chain. What I want to talk about more is the fact that if NADH and FADH2 cannot drop off their electrons at this electron transport chain, there will be no more NAD plus and FAD regenerated. So in addition to the electron transport chain stopping, what's going to happen to the Krebs cycle and the and glycolysis? Well, the Krebs cycle requires NAD plus and FAD for several of these reactions to occur. These reactions require that there's NAD available to pick up electrons to form NADH to form the product of each of these reactions where an electron acceptor is required. Without these electron acceptors, because there was no oxygen to pick up the electron at the end of the electron transport chain, NADH and FADH2 had nowhere to drop off their electrons. They have no more NAD plus and FAD to come pick up electrons. The Krebs cycle is going to stop. What about glycolysis? Well, there's another reaction right here that requires NAD plus to pick up electrons in order for the reaction to happen. If there's no NAD plus to pick up the electrons, this reaction won't happen and glycolysis will stop. So can cells make ATP without oxygen if they have no way to regenerate their NAD plus and FAD? Well, there's a process called fermentation that certain cell types have evolved that allows them to make ATP without oxygen. So let's look at glycolysis occurring here in the cytoplasm. Normally we have NAD plus picking up electrons from this reaction and that forms NADH. NADH would then bring those electrons to the electron transport chain, allowing for many electrons to be made. But also the fact that this reaction can occur allows the rest of glycolysis to occur. And glycolysis does produce a net of two ATPs per glucose. It actually makes four but it costs two. So there are two ATPs per glucose. So if a cell type could find a way to regenerate some NAD+, it could at least run glycolysis and make two ATPs per glucose. The electron transport chain is not going to be functioning without oxygen. So that is simply not going to be an option. But there are some cells that have found a way to drop their electrons from NADH off onto a different molecule that can accept them, not the electron transport chain. I'm going to go through two different cell types and the two different mechanisms of fermentation. The first is yeast. 
Yeast can take the electrons on NADH and drop them off on pyruvate. That forms in a series of reactions, ethanol and carbon dioxide, which are waste products. But importantly, that's going to allow the cell to regenerate NAD+. Human muscle has a slightly different way to do this. Human muscle takes the electrons in NADH, drops them off on pyruvate, and it forms a different waste product, lactic acid. Each of these cases, putting the electrons on pyruvate to form ethanol and carbon dioxide, or putting them on pyruvate to form lactic acid, forms NAD+, which allows the cells to keep running at least a glycolysis and produce ATP per glucose. It's really important to realize that the product of fermentation in yeast, which is ethanol and carbon dioxide, and the product of fermentation in human muscle, which is lactic acid, lactic acid, these are waste products. What the cell really needs is NAD plus to allow these further reactions to occur in glycolysis and make that two ATP per glucose. So cells that are able to do this, to, that are able to either use oxygen and produce lots of ATP by aerobic respiration, but then have a plan B in life, they're able to do either ethanol fermentation or lactic acid fermentation, we call these facultative anaerobes. They do aerobic respiration when there's oxygen present because they can make 36 ATPs per glucose. That's a lot of money. But they have a way to survive when there's no oxygen. They do fermentation, either ethanol fermentation or alcohol fermentation by yeast or lactic acid fermentation by human muscle. They do this to regenerate NAD plus when there is no oxygen. Now two ATPs per glucose is not a lot, but it's better than nothing. And it just might allow the cell to survive long enough that oxygen can be reintroduced to the environment. It allows cells to make two ATPs per glucose and two is better than none. What about some other organisms? There are some organisms that cannot live in the presence of oxygen. In other words, oxygen kills them. How do they survive? Well, they use a very similar process to aerobic respiration, but they use an alternate electron acceptor at the end of the electron transport chain, and they typically use sulfur. Sulfur is anatomically very similar to oxygen. It's in the same column in the um, periodic table, and it's able to pick up electrons at the end of the electron transport chain. Instead of forming water, it forms H2S, which is a little bit of a stinky compound. And you might smell it sometimes when you're driving by some marshy areas where there are a lot of anaerobic bacteria doing anaerobic respiration. So anaerobic respiration uses the whole electron transport chain it simply uses a different electron acceptor. Cells that cannot live in the presence of oxygen are called obligate anaerobes. They actually die in the presence of oxygen. But what if you can't use an alternate electron acceptor in the electron transport chain, like obligate anaerobes can do, and if you can't do fermentation as a plan B, then you are what we call an obligate aerobe. These cell types can only live in the presence of oxygen. A classic example of that is our human brain cells. Human brain cells cannot do fermentation. Without oxygen, our human brain cells die. So let's look at a table of our different organisms and their different mechanisms of making ATP. If a cell is an obligate aerobe, then it uses aerobic respiration when there's oxygen present, but it can't do any metabolic processes when there's no oxygen. These cell types will die without oxygen. And a classic example is the brain. Obligate anaerobes actually die in the presence of oxygen, and they can perform anaerobic respiration using alternate electron acceptor at the end of the electron transport chain. And this is what they do as their only metabolic process. Facultative anaerobes have a plan A and a plan B in life. When there's oxygen, they do aerobic respiration and they make 36 ATPs per glucose. However, if the oxygen is removed, they can re uh, survive for a short time doing fermentation and producing two ATPs per glucose. 
They can only survive for a short time because the waste products that they produce in the process of fermentation are actually toxic to these organisms. So alcohol actually kills the yeast when it reaches a high concentration. And lactic acid builds up in your muscle to feel that burn when you're running and it makes you have to stop because you simply can't keep going on only two ATPs per glucose. Some common misconceptions that I often see students make um, they have a hard time telling the difference if given information between alcoholic and lactic acid information um, fermentation. So if you're given information on what a cell is doing, and for example, if you're told, well, it's not using oxygen, but it is producing CO2, then you're going to have to assume that it's doing alcoholic fermentation because alcoholic fermentation produces carbon dioxide along with alcohol. Lactic acid fermentation does not produce carbon dioxide. So that's a good way of telling these two fermentation processes apart. Another common misconception is that anaerobic respiration is the same as fermentation. And in fact, there are a lot of YouTube videos out there calling these two the same process, and that's simply not correct. Anaerobic respiration uses the electron transfer chain. It simply uses a different electron acceptor at the end of the electron transport chain. Fermentation, organisms that do fermentation only use glycolysis, and they're only able to make that 2 ATP per glucose. And then another thing I just want to point out is the ethanol that is produced in alcoholic fermentation and lactic acid that is produced by human muscles in lactic acid fermentation, they're waste products. The desired product is NAD+, which allows glycolysis to keep happening. As I said, when alcohol reaches a certain level, it eventually kills the yeast. And the lactic acid is the burn you feel in your muscles when you are short of oxygen. So that's all for tonight.